Welcome back. Um, thank you for coming to view my video series. Um, if this is the first time you've come here and you have not seen any of my other videos, I strongly suggest you stop or pause now and go back and view my introductory video on the four-volume set of the Liturgy of the Hours. Although that video uh, series is um, focusing on the four-volume set, it does contain um, a lot of the information about what the liturgy is, um, uh, why we did, why we pray it, how we pray it, um, and a little bit of the history of it, um, and each of the individual lessons um, outside of that introductory, um, like morning prayer, evening prayer, <clears throat> they do translate uh, over to the Christian prayer book as well. Um, as a matter of fact, they are identical, um, you know, in form. So if this is, um, if you have already seen my four volume set, um, this video is not for you. There will be a subsequent video to this, which will detail, uh, to the best of my ability, the differences between the single volume, uh, Christian prayer book and the four volume liturgy of the hours set. Um, so the, so stick by and stand around for that one. Uh, this video, again, is not for you. This is for people that have not um, actually used the Christian prayer book and are interested in doing so um, and may not uh, want to do the full liturgy of the hours or are not ready for that kind of commitment. All right, um, so let's let's begin. Uh, hopefully you have viewed my introductory video um, on the general liturgy of the hours so you understand some of the things that we're going to be uh, discussing. Um, the first thing to understand is what you get. Um, when you order the set, you receive a book. In this case, the Christian prayer book. Um, you receive a little welcome paper, a couple of pieces of cardboard. You don't get, you don't get that one. Um, and you get the St. Joseph Guide for Christian Prayer, the Liturgy of the Hours. Uh, let's go over what these things are first. Um, the key bit of information here is the guide. It's the Guide for Christian Prayer. Um, this guide tells you what page number you should be on on whatever day of the week you are in. Uh, for example, just randomly here, June, uh, June 5th, it's a Wednesday. Um, you would find pages for your morning prayer, evening prayer, office of readings, um, night prayer, day prayer. Um, we're going to cover what those, uh, uh, all that stuff is later. Uh, again, hopefully you saw the introductory video so you understand the general format of the liturgy of the hours. Um, it starts with an invitatory. Uh, well, the traditional one starts with the invitatory, the office of readings, morning prayer, the three daytime prayers, evening prayer, and night prayer. Um, the Christian prayer book seems to focus specifically on morning and evening prayers with some abbreviated versions uh, of day prayer and evening prayer in there. Oh, I'm sorry, it also does have a full night prayer sequence as well. Um, uh, prayer... So if you only have enough time to pray one or more of the prayers, then the Christian prayer book is for you. If you have the time and ability to do the entire liturgical uh, day uh, in prayer, uh, then the four-volume set would uh, would be the best option for you. Um, all right, so we have the guide here. Now, this guide comes out every year, and you should buy it if you can. It's only $2.50. Um, you can get it online or, you know, I mean, buy it online or you can actually, um, and then, you know, you know what, there are actually websites that do have, um, some, some of these page numbers listed online as well, if you search around for them, but the book is easy to carry around, especially if you're in a place where you don't have access uh, or it looks kind of rude when you whip out your phone to, to do a prayer. Um, now the form, you have to be careful with these forms here. Um, you know, they, you know, they have it on both sides, this handy, handy dandy form here. Problem is that uh, each side is for a different version. So pay very attention, very careful attention here. For example, this one here, please send me blank copies of the St. Joseph Guide for Christian Prayer. Notice that in Christian Prayer, it's only two fifty, but the obverse of this is for the four volume of the Liturgy of the Hours. Now that's obviously going to be different because four volumes does not translate into one volume for page numbers. Um, yeah, the book's also a bit thicker, I believe, for the uh, for the Liturgy of the Hours one, because it is for, you know, for, no, no, actually it's not, it's the same number of days, eh, you know, cancel that. But anyway, it is different, so you have to be careful about what you're, um, what, what, what you're picking up, otherwise you're going to uh, be pretty frustrated. Um, it also comes with these two uh, cards, you know, a little thin, you know, card stock here, 
these are some of the basic prayers that you're going to be doing. Um, I usually like to just take the number one and slip it into the side of the book. That way I can pull it out. Um, the reason they do this on here is because, as it plainly says, it is a common text. These are the texts that you're going to say every day without fail, uh, assuming that you're doing this whole, you know, Christian prayer, uh, you know, sequence. Um, these are the canticles. Um, you'll see them listed in the book, which we'll cover later. Uh, there are three primary canticles you're going to be coming across. The canticle of Zechariah, the canticle of um, Mary, and the canticle of Simeon. Um, or Simeon. Um, now, the canticle of Zechariah it, you know, starts with your morning prayer. Um, this one is said every day without fail. Every day. It doesn't matter what you know, day, what year. What the uh, you know what part of the liturgical year you were in? This does not change. The antiphons may change. Again, I know I'm beating a you know a horse here, but hopefully you re you know you review the introductory video for the liturgy of the hours so that you understand some of these terms that I am talking about, um, especially the layouts, um, the general format of uh, of the prayer, which begins with uh, you know, usually for the morning and evening prayer it will begin with your hymn, and well start we'll start with your opening. Then your hymn, then your psalms, then your readings, your responsory, um, intercessions, um, and, and prayer, and then a closing. Uh, hopefully you understand all these terms that you have seen that video. I can't stress enough that you should see the introductory video first. All right, enough with the admonitions. Let's continue. Um, morning prayer does not change. Here it is. Same thing with evening prayer. Bam, here it is. Canticle of Mary does not change. Invitatory begins your, uh, your prayer day. Does not change. Well, actually, it does. Uh, it's usually Psalm 95, but you can substitute it with 167 or 24 if you get bored or you know, or just want some variety in your life. Um, now, all of these canticles, you know, the morning, evening, the super morning, I call, I guess you'd call it the pre-morning, and your um, canticle of Simeon, uh, which is your night prayer. Um, that, that's usually printed in the book because it's, uh, it only has to be printed, uh, well, they printed seven times. Um, we'll cover that as well. Uh, and they all close with the doxology. This doxology is different than you're used to in your rosary. Your rosary is a little bit different. You know, the glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. World without end. Uh, this one's a little bit different. They don't have the world without end in there. Uh, it's not glory be to the Father, it's simply glory to the Father. You say this doxology every time. Uh, back of it, now, if you were to do the Office of Readings, um, on solemnities, which includes Sundays, because Sunday is a solemnity according to the Catholic Church, um, you would usually follow the second reading with a hymn call that to do them before you move on to your morning prayer, uh, in which case you would do another hymn for the morning prayer. So you'd be doubling up on hymns on Sundays and on uh, you know, special solemnities and high, high holy days. Second card were the additional psalms that they had mentioned in the first card. 167 and 24 should be in here. There's Psalm 24. And they also give you this convenient little um, uh, beginning and ending of the hours. Um, now the first one, you see the beginning of the hours? This is for the invitatory. It is the beginning of the first hour of the day. Uh, when you do that, it is, Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. While you are saying that, bless yourself with your thumb, the side of your thumb against your lips as you do when the gospel reading is done at Mass. Uh, that is how you open your morning. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I, don't even, I don't even fully get out of bed. I grab my book and I start, Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. And then I begin. Then when you are done with that, uh, you would, you know, with the invitatory, you would normally move on to morning prayer if you can. Um, if, you know, if not, you could do morning prayer later. Same thing with evening prayer. Um, if you are doing them at the same time, the invitatory in the morning, you can skip the opening for morning prayer. However, if you are separating it by any period of time between those two, you're going to do morning prayer a little bit later and, and definitely evening prayer later on. You begin with God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And you drop the Alleluia during Lent. So, this is the main part right here. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Bless yourself as you're doing that. Uh, with the traditional sign of the cross, you know, fingers to the you know, head, chest, and shoulders. Uh, and then, usually a hymn would follow. 
again, that's part of the structure that you should be familiar with now from the previous uh, video. Um, it starts with the opening, then the hymn, and then you move on to the Psalms. Uh, conclusion is similar. Now, the conclusion of morning and evening prayers, once you're done with the final prayer uh, that's in the books, um, you're supposed to say something at the end. Now, Christian prayer and the Liturgy of the Hours is designed also for communal um, prayer. So as a result, if there's a deacon or a priest, um, there are usually different endings for it. But if you're doing this in private recitation, you usually simply close with, "May the Lord, you know, as you're blessing yourself, may the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Office of readings in the daytime are a little bit different with the closing prayer. Instead of doing the, may the Lord bless us, you close with simply, let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. Um, in particular, they do it in, in a communal prayer. I like to do it personally, uh, even in uh, you know, a singular recitation. Um, night prayer uh, also has its own separate you know, conclusion. Um, may the all-powerful Lord grant us a restful night and a peaceful death. Amen. That is also where you're going to be doing uh, the sign of the cross. Um, and at the end of the night prayer, um, they also have, you do an antiphon in honor of Mary. Um, the antiphons um, are listed in the book, um, but they also include some of the you know, uh, simpler ones that you're familiar with from your rosary. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, um, and also Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Those are also considered antiphons in honor of Mary. So they can be said in a pinch if, um, if, uh, if you can't find the... Uh, uh, the additional antiphons in the book. Uh, some of them are in Latin. Uh, I like to just try them, you know, just because, uh, you know, sounds cool. <laughs> All right. But anyway, so that covers the stuff that you get with the book. Now we're going to cover the book itself. Um, the book is broken up into sections. Um, I'm just going to give you a general layout of it. Um, the This book covers the entire liturgical year, which um, starts on Advent and runs straight through to Christ the King Sunday. Um, Advent Sunday, uh, this year, actually it was last year, 2018, I believe was December 2nd. It was the first, uh, Sunday in December. And this will run through, uh, for this year, uh, to Christ the King Sunday, which is November 24th, uh, 2019, which is obviously, as you can do the math in your head right now, one week, uh, prior to the beginning of the new Advent season for 2019. So that's how the liturgical calendar works. Um, it's not January 1st to December 31st. Uh, in this case, it is uh, December 2nd to November 24th. All right. Now, the proper seasons. Um, this section contains specific prayers, openings, antiphons for the specific day uh, of the year, uh, throughout the year, uh, especially for holidays. For example, again, second Sunday of Advent is covered in here. Epiphany. Ordinary time is uh, anything when you know between uh, the holy seasons. Uh, nothing's really happening in those times. Uh, Lent, Holy Week's in here. Easter's in here. Passion Sunday, second week of Easter. It goes straight through right up until past Pentecost. You know, all the way through to Trinity Sunday. Sacred Hearts listed in here. Christ the King Sunday. That's the that's the end of your liturgical um, liturgical year. I believe this ends like page six ninety eight or not six. Uh, what was that? 683, I think. Okay, so the whole first part of the book is devoted to the proper seasons. And like I said, the proper seasons, you work with that in conjunction with the Psalter. Um, now, the Psalter is where all the Psalms come from. Um, now, if you know from the introductory video, you're really sleeving the information together. Um, you're taking readings, responsories, intercessions, antiphons, uh, all of that you're taking from this, you know... Um, from the proper seasons, and you're merging that with the, your Psalter, with the Psalms that go along with it. Because each of these prayers generally has a three Psalm sequence that goes with it. Now, the four week Psalter uh, is completely oblivious to any, uh, any of the liturgical days. Uh, it does not know when Easter is, it does not know when Lent is, it does not know when the Ascension is or Pentecost. It is just operating on a Sunday you know, through Saturday for, you know, for, um, uh, four week cycle. Uh, so it changes. So every, you know, every, every fourth Sunday loops back to, you know, Sunday for week one. And that's how they refer to them. Week one, week two, week three, and week four. Um, so that's going to be a little bit further into the book. Um, the, uh, the, uh, proper seasons 
and the Psalter are separated by the ordinary. The ordinary. Now, the ordinary is your basic skeleton of your prayer. Whenever you get lost, you can always go back to the ordinary, and it tells you the inhibitory begins, and then the psalm that it tells you to use, and even gives you some of the antiphons that can be used here, and specifically during the day period. Now, because this is a full, uh, full liturgical year in this one book, um, it is you know uh, they tell you specifically they give you these different dates for the antiphons to use in the um, four book cycle because you're using more specific um, you know like Lent to Easter uh, there's a Advent to Pentecost um, and then the ordinary time ones they um, they can get away with not having to list every single antiphon available to you but because this is the four the uh, the you know the full year they have to list all of them in here so that you can pick which one you're going to need to be using. Um, Sometimes you can also find the uh, the antiphon in your proper of seasons, depending on where you are in that. Uh, depending on you know, what kind of day it is. Uh, so you'd really have to look and see what um, where you are in the calendar and what your uh, you know and, and what's in your proper seasons, you know, to merge with your Psalter. Now as you can see it goes through you know with your invitatory. A whole bunch again, all these antiphons. Look at the, you know, recovering from you know, uh, octave of Easter until Wednesday before the Ascension, between Ascension and Pentecost. I mean, all of these antiphons, you have to find the one that fits where you are in for the invitatory. There's your psalm. They, they do print it for you. Again, it's the same psalm that can be found on your on your form here. Come, let us sing to the Lord. So, nice and easy. It even tells you the antiphon is recited and then repeated. Now, this is this is interesting. The antiphon does not have to be repeated after each stanza if you are doing this alone. If you're doing this alone, you start with your antiphon, and you end with your antiphon. And that's it. And that pretty much covers your morning prayer. I mean, your uh, invitatory. Morning prayer moves on. Now, they specifically mention here, the verse and response are omitted when the hour begins with the invitatory. You know, one thing I may have forgotten to mention, I think there's a hymn involved here. There's usually a... A hymn involved with the invitatory too, I believe. Uh, maybe not. No, no, that's the Office of Readings. My apologies. Cancel what I just said. Um, there is a uh, the hymn for the morning prayer. But if you notice, the verse and the response are omitted when the hour begins with the invitatory. Um, if you are able to do them together, as I mentioned, uh, you know, your invitatory you know, rolling immediately into your morning prayer, you can skip this opening here and go right to your hymn. Appropriate hymn is said. Well, what is it? You know, again, that'll be in your um, in your book uh, in the proper of seasons, most likely, or sometimes they throw it in the psalter as well if uh, the, if there's nothing special going on. Psalmody, same thing. You're reading the psalms. You know, again from your psalter with any antiphons that may be added in through your uh, proper seasons. Then it moves on to the reading, the responsory. And now here's your your gospel cancel uh, canticle. Intercessions. And it closes up with the Lord's Prayer. And there's usually a another prayer at the end of it. There's usually another prayer that will also be in the um in your um in your proper seasons as well. And then the final closing. You should remember that one. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Similar with the evening prayer. Uh, although, because you have not done the invitatory at this point, uh, you should have done it already in the morning, um, you will start with, God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me as you're doing the sign of the cross. Move on to the doxology. Do your hymn, psalm, reading, responsory, gospel canticle. And as a matter of fact, they do print the gospel canticle here. I think, they, was that in, yeah, I think that was in the morning as well. Yeah, here's the morning canticle, um, which is also on the card. Remember the morning prayer? Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. There it is. It's in the ordinary, you know, in case you lose these cardboard things or you don't want to lug them around. They will be in the ordinary. Um, our Father closes with that. Dismissal. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. There's your closing. And then we move into the four-week Psalter. So the ordinary is in the middle, between the, the, the proper of seasons and the Psalter. 
reason it's in there is because it is literally the, the transition point. The, uh, the ordinary will tell you how to merge the proper seasons with the four-week Psalter. So there's your, there's your merge point right there. Nice and easy. Now, in the Christian prayer book, which I thought, thought, thought was nice, the Psalter, if you, if you notice here on the edge, the complete Psalter is in red, the red-edged pages. That covers the complete Psalter. You notice right there, ends with the red and ends with daytime prayer. So the entire Psalter is contained in this section here, this little red section. The four-week cycle, as I mentioned, you know, week one, two, three, and four. Um, now, the four-week Psalter in this book is limited to morning prayer and evening prayer. Uh, the, four, the, the full liturgy uh, has uh, more involved in it. I will discuss that in my comparison video. Um, okay, and then we move on to the daytime prayer. Now, the daytime prayer is a seven-day cycle, um, yeah, as opposed to the four-week uh, full cycle um, that, you, that you have in the Psalter. Um, so they use a seven days, uh, the seven day cycle, Sunday through Saturday, uh, changes up. Now I don't, again, if you want to explore this by all means, uh, do so. But if you are serious about doing the liturgy of the hours and including daytime prayer, um, and the office of readings, I, I really suggest you get the four volume set. Um, this, uh, this, you know, this version does not do the daytime prayer justice, nor does it do the Office of Readings ju you know, justice. Those, again, uh, I'll discuss in my next video. Um, but just to familiarize yourself with the book, you have your daytime prayer, which is followed by the complementary prayers. Uh, where is it? Here is the complementary psalmody. Um, this is this is common to all of them. Um, because there are three sections to the morning, uh, to the daytime prayer, um, it is mid morning, uh, midday, and mid afternoon. Um, even the four volume set has one set of psalms for uh, any one of the three hours that you do. Um, to fill in the rest, the other two you would choose from the complementary psalmody. So if you use the proper seasons or the psalters, um, you know, uh, you know, three you know, three psalm you know, set for say mid morning then you would fill in the remaining two parts of the day with midday and mid-afternoon. You know, or if you decided to use the, uh, you know, the, the Psalter and the proper seasons, you know, in conjunction with uh, mid you know, with midday, then you use the complementary one for mid-morning and mid-afternoon. So it's nice and simple, it's just you know, switching them out a little bit so you're not repeating the same three Psalms, uh, you know, three times a day. Uh, you actually mix it up a little bit. Uh, after that follows night prayer. Night prayer is standard. It is similar to what is in the, um, what do you call it? Uh, in the four volume set as well. So I got no complaints on that. Um, following night prayer, uh, following night prayer, um, are the antiphons and, uh, the honor of the blessed Virgin. As I mentioned before, um, there are some familiar ones here. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Uh, you know that one from your rosary. Um, you also know Hail Mary full of grace from your rosary. The other ones you can fill in, and of course there, you know, there are the, you know, the Latin ones I like to sometimes, uh, you know, say, uh, you know, before before bed. Uh, I have no idea how poorly I'm pronouncing the words, but uh, the intent is there, and, uh, and the Lord knows that that's what, uh, you know, what, what it's all about, the intent. Um, all right, now following night prayer is the proper of saints. That's the word I was looking for with the. Um, uh, let me call it for um solemnities, um you know honor you know memorials feast days of saints, um not the proper seasons. It's not covering like Lent or anything like that. These are specifically for proper saints: Basil the Great, you know uh, Elizabeth Ann Seton. Uh, they all they all go through uh through the entire you know the entire year. This one is in calendar order. Um, you know, what we're familiar with, uh, starts with January, ends in December, you know, just to make it easier for us, uh, as, you know, you know, Christian people following the, uh, was it the Julian calendar, I believe. 
Um, after the proper of saints, in this uh, in this version of the book, I don't know if it's in all the versions, and I was not even aware that I was buying this uh, particular version. That includes includes the hymns, includes the music. I mean, I didn't know when I bought it because I bought it online, but uh, it doesn't does even mention right in the beginning. It's the edition with music, so they may make one without the uh, without music, um, which is you know it's obviously fine, but. Uh, you know, in here they they do mention you know they do have the liturgical guide for hymns uh, because uh, again, with the proper seasons, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the hymns that you're doing, especially like in the morning prayers, you know, and even in the evening prayers, it doesn't make sense for you to be singing Christmas, uh, you know, carols uh, in August, um, you know, along with it. So you know, they 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 pretty much try to help you out here during Christmas time. You would use any of these hymns. During Holy Family, Mary, Mother of God, Epiphany, during Holy Week, Passion Sunday, during Ordinary Time, you can use any of these. So it just lay, you know, lays it out nice. And if you know, if you're, you know, just, just like just a guide, and if you're really musically in, inclined, you know, they even have all the all the notes and the you know the cadence to go down with this. It's a, it's a nice little thing. That's like about 200 pages of this stuff. Um, yeah, 1785, I think we move on to, yeah, after, after this, it moves on into, it, uh, Office of Readings. We move on to the Office of Readings in here. Now, Office of Readings, Friday week two, Friday week two. Now, the Office of Readings, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm really... If you're going to be doing the Office of Readings, I, I really suggest you do the four-volume set. It's very comprehensive. Um, they have some great readings in there. Um, you know, they really revolve, uh, you know, around a lot. Um, they move around a lot, uh, and and it's you know it's much better laid out. Um, these over here, I'm really uncomfortable with these. To be honest with you, um, I mean it is the general format with the you know the hymn, psalmody. Yeah, you know, but then when it goes, when it gets to the readings, though, it, it's just, it's just yeah you know, for the office of readings, it yeah you know, it 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 just doesn't really you know float my boat here. Um, the you know the Psalms and the Antiphons they do follow the four week cycle, which is normal. However, yeah you know, they they break this out into uh, biblical readings. Let's see, biblical readings and non biblical readings. You know, again, you know, there's an Advent, you know, a selection for you know during Advent. You know, you, you do these readings, and in the normal office of readings, you have the, um, what do you call it, the biblical reading first, followed by a non-biblical reading. Usually uh, some learned uh, doctor or bishop of the church, uh, you know, sermon that they'll mention in there. Um, but these are so generic, you know, you, you know you, you're pretty much free to, you know, almost to just pick anything you want out of these. You know, it's just, there's no structure here, which, which is, I'm a man of structure. And I'm just not, I'm not too thrilled with this. So, uh, again, I mean, if you want to get your feet wet and learn a little bit about it, the Office of Reading is great, but if you intend on doing, you know, the full Office of Readings, I really suggest you get the four-volume set. Uh, I'm going to cover that in my video um, about the differences as well. Um, the rest of the book is pretty much, I believe it's, you know, what is this, poetry and, let's see, I think it's like poetry in a two, yeah, here it is, like, like poetry in here. Yeah, here's the non-biblical readings. Yeah, there's a two-year cycle of scriptural passages, you know, for the office of readings. Uh, you know, I think there's some index of hymns. Maybe before that, there's some poetry in here. I, mean, I don't even know what, what this stuff is for. There's just some, it's like they threw some random poetry in here. But anyway, that, that, that pretty much covers the, you know, the contents of the book. Now, you know, to really get the most out of it, you have to, uh, Lay your ribbons in where they're going to make the most sense. Um, in this case, I'll lay them out the same way I did in my four-volume set. Um, it seems to work well. As a matter of fact, because of the extra, you know, the way they broke up the uh, the Psalter and, you know, and laid out this whole thing, I actually need seven ribbons but uh, to, to get everything I would want, but working with the five is, you know, it's doable. Um, I, the, way I, the reason I chose the... The colors as I did, um, and the layout is because I don't like seeing crossed ribbons. So, yeah, but the way I have my ribbons laid in here is in order of, uh, of how the ribbons were tacked to the little glue board they stick down in the back here. Um, so, 
I've been using August 12th as my uh, sample, um, 2019. Uh, it's an ordinary time, 19th week of ordinary time. So in my proper seasons, I would find, I would thumb through the entire page until I found my Sunday, my 19th Sunday in ordinary time. I would lay my ribbon in here, and then it's going to tell me what page of the Psalter to use, uh, or what section, and it's week three. So that one, I would go and I would lay my Purp, uh, my uh, was it royal, uh, royal blue, you know, ribbon in the proper Monday week three proper portion of the psalter, and in between, don't forget, is your ordinary. So I will lay my purple ribbon right on the invitatory of the ordinary. So now these three here, these three ribbons, pretty much comprise most of what I'm going to be doing throughout the uh, you know for the prayer cycle. I throw in the yellow ribbon for my night. Easy to get to again because it's a seven week, you know, it's a seven day cycle, just rotates back and forth. So the yellow hardly ever moves, and well, moves seven times a week, but you know, it's not bouncing all over the page, you know, all over the whole book. Um, and the red I usually mark for my solemnities. Um, in this case, again, August 12th is my example, so I set it down between you know, August 11th and 13th. So it's all ready for the assumption on the 15th, or actually for technically for the 13th, um, for you know, for uh. For that solemnity. So now it's all laid out. All right. Now the prayers themselves. Um, you know what? I'm probably going to take a break right now. Um, I see that this video has gone on for a little while for the introduction um, for the Christian prayer book. Uh, you'll probably want to take a break and then I will uh, cover the morning prayer and the evening prayer um, uh, in particular. Um, they are also uh, ana analogous to the same ones uh, in the Liturgy of the Hours, the four-volume set. So if you want to go view those instead, that would be that would be perfectly fine. It's really the same thing. Um, but uh, for completeness of this uh, little mini uh, you know, set, I'm going to do videos for them as well, um, for the Christian prayer book uh, in particular. All right, um, so let's call it uh, for now. Uh, you have a lot to di digest and a lot to think about. And... Um, God bless, and I will see you shortly.